Rhodesia, a name you might have heard in history books. If you do not know anything about Rhodesia, it is basically the British colonial name for this region of Africa, more specifically modern-day Zimbabwe. Some people romanticize Rhodesia and dreamt of reviving it, whilst some people reckon that the term Rhodesia itself is evil. So what is so special about this region in Africa that garnered significant attention on the internet comments section? Well, it kinda began with the Brits during the scramble of Africa when the Europeans colonized the crap out of Africa. The Brits became the third will of the Portuguese colonies, because Britain is the bigger bully with the bigger muscles. Cecil Rhodes, a British bloke who wanted British flag to be planted between Cape Town to Cairo, began exploring the lands above South Africa on behalf of the British South Africa Company. The lands were of course named after him. Because why bother learning the local indigenous dark skin people culture and history when you can name their places based on your own preference, and you are the first person to explore anything, disregarding whatever prior achievements the local indigenous people already had. Slowly but surely, light skin European colonist settlements cropped up, forming two Rhodesias. It is like the manifest destiny, but for Boers and Brits. The Rhodesias became formal British colonies after World War I. Northern Rhodesia became a colonial protectorate. Southern Rhodesia had more light-skinned dudes, so it became a self-governing British colony. Southern Rhodesia was originally intended to be a part of the Union of South Africa, and therefore had a lot more light-skinned settlements. Northern Rhodesia has lots of copper, and made tons of money. During that time, the light-skinned Europeans reckon that they are the master race, the level of intelligence is based on skin color alone, and super dark skin color people are too dumb to rule the lands. As such, it is quite common for light-skinned European settlement colonies to have light-skinned minority rule, whether officially or unofficially. Northern Rhodesia did it unofficially, whilst southern Rhodesia went all out on apartheid laws. Land grabs, good life for light-skinned dudes, bad life for dark-skinned dudes. Fast forward, after World War II, Britain was broke, and lost its superpower status. The new big bullies were United States and Soviet Union, both of which did not like European colonial powers distracting their boxing match. It was the end of the European colonization age. And so, Britain gave up its colonies one by one. To ensure good relations with the post-independence countries, Britain had a rule of no independence without majority rule. For the British settler colonies like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, it was quite straightforward, because the light-skinned dudes were the majority. Besides, they were kind of already independent, kind of. For South Africa, it was already practically independent, so it did not care what the British independence policy was, and continued doing its own minority rule up until the 1990s. The Rhodesias were not independent enough, and therefore subject to British policy of enforcing majority rule. The Rhodesias first became a federation with Nyasaland, but it failed due to the rising nationalism by dark-skinned African people. Upon dissolution of this federation, Northern Rhodesia declared independence, and renamed itself Zambia. The same goes for Nyasaland, who went with the name Malawi. Both Zambia and Malawi have majority rule, by dark-skinned African dudes, on Britain's good boys list. For Southern Rhodesia, it dropped the name Southern, because it was the only Rhodesia left. Rhodesia wanted to retain its light-skinned minority rule, so it declared independence, an act of rebellion against United Kingdom. Unsurprisingly, civil war in Rhodesia soon followed, between minority light-skinned dudes and majority dark-skinned dudes. As this was during the Cold War, the big bullies had to chip in. The United States, and South Africa supported the light-skinned dudes, whilst Soviet Union and the neighboring African countries supported the dark-skinned dudes. From the point of view of light-skinned dudes, the British demand for majority dark skin rule is an attack on the way of life, case study Mau Mau rebellion in Kenya. In addition, much of the Rhodesian economy and land was developed by light skin Rhodesians. 
light-skinned Rhodesian dudes reckon they were the patriotic nationalists who were fighting against the dark-skinned dudes who were commies and terrorists. From the point of view of dark-skinned dudes, minority light skin rule is basically domination by foreign power. The dark skin reckon they were the true nationalists who fight against the real terror of minority rule. Both sides who were both nationalists and terrorists fought the crap out of each other. There was a famous against all odds battle here. Long story short, the light skin dudes conceded, partially because foreign support pulled the plug. Britain returned to Rhodesia to oversee the handover of power. The majority dark skin dudes won the election, and this dude here became the first democratically elected leader of Rhodesia, now renamed Zimbabwe. Light skin people migrated out of Zimbabwe, land grab slash social justice, hyperinflation due to bad governance slash the fault of the light skin people, shady stuff, and corruption, and here we are today. So has Rhodesia turned better or worse after becoming Zimbabwe? Well, if you love good governance and administration, you might say Rhodesia is the best thing that has ever happened in this region of Africa, and Zimbabwe ruined it. If you love human rights and social justice, you might say Rhodesia is a huge jerk, Zimbabwe is good and fair for the people in this region of Africa, plus everyone had a chance to be a millionaire. Some light-skinned dudes will use the story of Zimbabwe to say that light-skinned people are better than everyone, multiculturalism is white genocide, intelligence is based on skin color, dark-skinned people should never be in government, because dark-skinned people will ruin a beautiful country. That is why some people think that Rhodesia is a symbol of white supremacist, igniting fanatic keyboard warriors from both sides. In the context of world history, the flight of dominant minority changing the fate of the entire country is nothing new. As such, some people reckon that Zimbabwe is what South Africa will be in the near future. Is this the fate of ex-minority rule sub-Saharan African countries? Only time will tell. The real question is, can you revive Rhodesia? Perhaps you are a light-skinned dude who would like to recreate a country for sentimental reasons. Well, first, you need to convince a lot of light-skinned people to migrate to Zimbabwe. Bonus if you can make the light-skinned people becoming the majority in Zimbabwe. You will need to crush any nationalistic protests and armed resistance from the dark-skinned dudes. Next, the light-skinned people will need to win democratic elections. You must ensure that the global community accepts and acknowledges the result of the democratic election. Once in power, perhaps it is a good idea to put up huge walls to prevent illegal migration from neighboring countries, so to maintain the demographics. You will need to improve the economy significantly, most likely in cooperation with neighboring countries as Zimbabwe does not have sea coasts. If you think light-skinned people are naturally better at governing a country, you might need to preserve your power and status as the dominant ruling class. To do that, you might need to do segregation, and rules that favor light-skinned people, because this is for the greater good of the country, and all the social injustice is definitely justified. You might want to confer honorary white titles to other skin color or nationalities who are super successful, because it is important to cherry pick who you want to be friends with. Once that is done, Congratulations, you have successfully revived Rhodesia. Good luck with global diplomatic isolation, and potential economic dominance slash exploitation by China. Thanks for watching.